Hello, today I'm going to teach you about keyframes. Now, keyframes are an important concept in any video editing software. As an example, I will be showing you in After Effects. Now, first we'll come down and bring our footage into a new comp. Now this new comp. So yeah, that was basically um my footage. Let's do a spin and shoot. But let's say I want to add a couple of effects here. One of the main key elements in After Effects is keyframes. So we'll pick a simple effect. Um, we'll pick a blur. And we'll do a and a Gaussian blur. And then up here we come with our um, regular settings. And let's say we want to blur it from the beginning to right about after we do our spin and are getting ready to jump. So, what's going to happen is, we'll press the stopwatch. This will tell it to um, set a keyframe. Then we'll press U on our keyboard. It'll bring up, U brings up any set keyframes already. And, um, <coughs> we will notice that there's no blurriness going on right now but if we bring this slider up to however blurry you want it well you can make it pretty blurry whatever you want and we'll set the keyframe and as you already know you press the stopwatch and the keyframe is already created now we move along into our time frame to where we want to stop the keyframe stop it about here we place the keyframe with the add or remove keyframe and we'll put this back to zero. Now, what this does is, this lets you know this frame will have zero blurriness, and this frame will have this much blurriness, and any frames in between will gradually unblur. As you notice, halfway through here, we'll be at like 22. We're all the way at the top, we're about 40. At the bottom, we're at zero. So. Now we'll render this out. It slightly blurs out. So this is basic concept in um, keyframing. Now there's multiple types of keyframes, and there's different ways you can use keyframes. For an example, <coughs> let's see what let's say we wanted to blur it in. Well, we could always change this keyframe to zero go about how far we want. Let's say we want to blur it to the spin. Put this at about 40. Move it along in the time to when we stop where we want it. Let's say after we shoot. We'll, we'll put it back at, we'll keep it at 40. And then about when we want it not blurry, we'll put it back to zero. So this will show you that it's going to blur in from the first frame all the way in here will be the blur time then between this keyframe and this keyframe it'll stay the same amount of blur and then from this keyframe to this keyframe it'll gradually down blur <coughs> make up a new word and I'll render this out you'll notice it stays blur between this these two points now you can also just be simple and make one frame in the middle so it'll gradually blur up to and then gradually down blur. But depending on how long you want the blur, it might not look as nice and other effects may not look as nice also. Alright, now keyframing isn't necessarily only in effects. Keyframing can also be used for position, scaling. Keyframing is basically used while traveling through the timeline, being able to change the values of a certain item. For example, we'll go to the text tool. We'll create a new text layer. We'll call this text. Scale it up. And you scale by pressing the S button. And then move this about. Now, let's say we wanted this to start out in the middle and move slightly to the corner well we can just 
put it to where we want it to keep stay in the middle and then we go to press the P button for position set a keyframe at this position then move how far we want along our timeline and drag out our text so now in between these two keyframes it'll slowly move to where you want it and then along the rest of it it'll stay there make sure you move this along it's a little too noticing right now let them notice in the middle so now we've done that let's say between this whole time that it's here we want it to fade in well we'll go press T and it'll bring up the opacity alright so now we will want this to fade in slightly along the track so what we'll do is we'll move to where we want it in set a keyframe if we want it to fade in we'll move all the way to where we want it to start fading and set this to zero and then it will gradually fade in and then move. Now if we render it up, you'll notice it fades in. And you can obviously change this where maybe you don't want it to fade as much with the, the keyframe along, you know, whatever. But there are also different types of keyframes. We'll go back to the position. You'll notice it fades in and then it just all of a sudden moves into the corner. We don't want it to do that. We want it to gradually start up and then move and then gradually slow down. So all we have to do is right click on the keyframe, we go to keyframe assistant and we go to easy ease. Now what this does is it will instead of making it sporadically move down like this and just randomly move, it will actually let it move with some momentum. See how it, nicely it swiftly it moves. So I'm going to show you. You can also do keyframes in many other programs other than After Effects. And then, as another example, I'll show you in Ve Sony Vegas. All you have to do is go down to <clears throat> the pan and crop. And you notice, let's say we want to move the the pan. You, ju you just go down here, set a keyframe. This will be the beginning position, move down, and we change the properties here, and like I said, another keyframe, and then again, you'll notice it'll gradually zoom in. So, I hope this tutorial has helped you with keyframes and the basic idea of it.